Hello, and welcome to the presentation offered by St. Joseph's Parish in Ottawa on the Feast of the Assumption of Mary. It is not often that the Church calls us to meditate on an event in the life of Mary instead of proclaiming the readings for the designated Sunday of the liturgical calendar. But when the Feast of the Assumption, which is celebrated on August the 15th, falls on a Sunday, we are invited to ponder the mystery of Christ's resurrection through the experience of Mary. Today, we celebrate Mary's Assumption as a victory over death, a shining example for all who hear God's word and believe in the divine promises. Mary, mother of God, mother of Jesus, now lives in glory. The faith, hope, and love that characterized her life now transforms her entire being. God has indeed done great things for her and through her. In the scriptures, the last scene in which Mary appears is the Feast of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit descended on the disciples in the form of tongues of fire. After that, she disappears from the written history. So every question we ask beyond that point, we have to answer on the basis of what Christians thought and did, what we call Christian piety. Toward the end of the 5th century, this feast was celebrated in Jerusalem at Gethsemane, in the basilica where Mary's tomb was venerated, and it was called the Feast of the Dormition, the falling asleep of Mary, recalling her death and entrance into glory. Much later, when the feast was marked by the Church in Rome, this feast was known as the Assumption of Mary. This local celebration of Mary became an official teaching of the Catholic Church on November the 1st, 1950, when Pope Pius XII solemnly stated, the Immaculate Mother of God, the Ever-Virgin Mary, having completed the course of her earthly bought life, was assumed body and soul into heavenly glory. The significance of the Church's declaration of the Solemnity of the Assumption of Mary in 1950 was not lost on a world exhausted by world war and the death of over 50 million human beings. At a moment in history when the value of human life had been so subjected to mindless brutality and destruction, Mary an obscure first century Palestinian woman is held up as the epitome of human existence and purpose. Her single trust in God magnified her brief life into universal and even cosmic significance. Her destiny is declared as the dignity of every human person, especially the poor in every age discounted by history, swept aside by the rich and the powerful. How will Mary's proclamation in today's gospel influence our words and actions in order to affirm the dignity of every human person and be a sign of God's justice as we confront the violence of our world and the abuse of privilege and power in our society? How will those words challenge us as we deal with the ever-increasing negative effects of climate change and respond to the accusations of cultural genocide of indigenous peoples. To the question, why the assumption, Luke's Gospel offers us three answers. The first component of today's mystery is the most obvious one. Blessed are you among women, Elizabeth exclaimed, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Mary has a unique role in the Incarnation, a very physical one. She will be the mother of the Messiah. The second element moves beyond Mary's bodily involvement to her spiritual engagement. Elizabeth continues, 
Blessed is she who believes the Lord's promises. At this point, Mary is moved to respond. In the Magnificat, she draws attention to the third level, the true heart of today's mystery. It is God's work. Her total being, physical and spiritual, is given over in the praise of God who has so gifted her. Far from being unique, her personal situation is only an outstanding example of what God can do for those who surrender themselves to the Holy One in faith and love. Now it is our turn. Today we celebrate this feast remembering St. Paul's words to, to the Romans about their new life in Christ. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This gift and divine promise reminds us that our journey of life is, uh, is also a journey of faith, that we come from God and we are returning in God in ways beyond our understanding and imagining. Like Mary, we too are filled with a divine life and that all of us are called each day to grow more perfectly into the image of Christ. Mary's resurrected state is a sign to the whole church of the final destiny of all the faithful. She possesses the fullness of life promised to those who, who now sleep in Christ and to the whole human community at the end of time. Through our prayer, worship, and service, may we live that new life, that resurrected life, that unity with God. Like Mary, may that new life fill us with wonder and praise for all the great things God is doing for us and through us. Take care. God bless.